is the moon Ehola spacecraft, and was brought here from another galaxy. The best possible explanation for the moon is observational error. The moon does not exist. The moon is bigger than it should be, apparently older than it should be, and much lighter in mass than it should be. It occupies an unlikely orbit and is so extraordinary that all existing explanations for its presence are fraught with difficulties and none of them could be considered remotely watertight. Erwin Shapiro, Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics The Hollow Moon Theory The Hollow Moon Hypothesis, or Spaceship Moon Hypothesis, proposes that Earth's moon is either wholly hollow, or otherwise contains a substantial interior space. No scientific evidence exists to support the idea so far. Seismic observations, and other data collected since spacecraft began to orbit, or land on the moon indicate that it has a thin crust, extensive mantle, and small, dense core, although overall it is much less dense than Earth. The hollow moon concept is similar to the better known hollow Earth hypothesis, which was a recurring plot device in pre-space flight science fiction. The first discussion of a hollow Earth was by scientist Edmund Halley in 1692, with the first mention of a hollow moon being in H. G. Wells' 1901 novel, The First Men in the Moon. An Artificial Sputnik of the Earth the origin of the moon is one of the most complicated problems of cosmogony. So far there have been basically four hypotheses under discussion. Hypothesis 1. The moon was once a part of the earth and broke away from it. This has now been refuted by the evidence. Hypothesis 2. The moon was formed independently from the same cloud of dust and gas as the earth, and immediately became the earth's natural satellite. But then why is there such a big difference between the specific gravity of the moon 3.33 grams per cubic centimeter, and that of the earth 5.5 grams? Furthermore, according to the latest information, analysis of samples brought back by the US Apollo astronauts, lunar rock is not of the same composition as the earth's. Hypothesis 3. The moon came into being separately, and, moreover, far from the Earth, perhaps even outside the solar system. This would mean that the moon would not have to be fashioned from the same clay as our own planet. Sailing through the universe, the moon came into Earth's proximity, and by a complex interplay of forces of gravity was brought within a geocentric orbit, very close to circular. But a catch of this kind is virtually impossible. In fact, Scientists studying the origin of the universe today have no acceptable theory to explain how the Earth-Moon system came into being. Hypothesis 4. The Moon is an artificial Earth satellite put into orbit around the Earth by some intelligent beings unknown to ourselves. Christopher Knight, and Alan Balter book. Who built the Moon? The Moon has astonishing synchronicity with the Sun. When the sun is at its slowest and weakest in midwinter, the moon is at its highest and brightest, and the reverse occurs in midsummer. Both set at the same point on the horizon at the equinoxes and at the opposite point at the solstices. What are the chances that the moon would naturally find an orbit so perfect that it would cover the sun at an eclipse, and appear from Earth to be the same size? What are chances that the alignments would be so perfect at the equinoxes, and solstices? The Spaceship Moon Theory The Spaceship Moon Theory, is a theory that claims the Earth's moon may actually be an alien spacecraft. The theory was put forth by two members of the Soviet Academy of Sciences in a July 1970 article entitled, Is the Moon the Creation of Alien Intelligence? thesis was that the moon is a hollowed out planetoid created by unknown beings with technology far superior to any on earth. Huge machines would have been used to melt rock, and form large cavities within the moon, with the resulting molten lava spewing out onto the moon's surface. The moon would therefore consist of a hull-like inner shell, and an outer shell made from metallic rocky slag. For reasons unknown. The spaceship moon was then placed into orbit around the Earth. 
Their theory relies heavily on the suggestion that large lunar craters, generally assumed to be formed from meteor impact, are generally too shallow, and have flat, or even convex bottoms. Small craters have a depth proportional to their diameter but larger craters are not deeper. It is theorized that small meteors are making a cup-shaped depression in the rocky surface of the moon, while the larger meteors are drilling through a five-mile thick rocky layer, and hitting a high tensile hull underneath. Additionally the authors note that the surface material of the moon is substantially composed of different elements. Chromium, titanium and zirconium from the surface of the earth. They also note that some moon rocks are older than the oldest rocks on earth. They postulate that the moon comprises a rocky outer layer a few miles thick covering a strong hull perhaps 20 miles thick, and beneath that there is a void, possibly containing an atmosphere. Alex Collier Theory Alex Collier claims to be Andromedan contactee. Andromedans are benevolent human extraterrestrials from constellation of Andromeda. The contacts with this ET race started in 1964, when Alex was a little boy. In 1985, the contacts became more frequent, and he was given information about different ET races who have visited Earth one time. Our genetics composed of 22 different ET races our spirituality, earth agenda, secret government or new world order, our religions, and the history of earth, and our universe. Alex Collier claims our moon is actually the interstellar transport ship that was brought here from a distant solar system. It contained an experiment run by the grey aliens, and their reptilian masters, our genetically engineered ancestors. Fluke or not, most sci-fi writers proved to be quite visionary, if not somewhat prophetic. The book Letters from Andromeda, the brainchild of Job Robinson, and Alex Collier describes a telepathic conversation with alien beings originating from the Andromeda galaxy. An ancient being called Marani from the constellation Zenati, transmitted important information to Collier, questioning the lies spread in our history books. The Andromedan exposed the deceitful way humans are being ruled, the lies that govern our everyday lives without our consent, or even awareness. We are being told nothing about the real concerns of real life, much less about what is actually happening in our solar system. Marani's biggest revelation pertained to mankind's true history, and a secret base on the moon. Earth's satellite carried a vital role in our genesis but far from any way we have been taught so. The moon was brought from the constellation Ursa Minor, 432 light years from Earth. To serve as a transport ship for reptilians, human reptilian hybrids, and the first generation of human ancestors to descend on Earth. Our moon made its way in our galaxy dragged by an asteroid that is believed to cross our galaxy every 25,000 Earth years. Marani also revealed that our moon once orbited the 17th planet of the Chowta star system, home of the Andromedans. What we see today of the moon, are in fact the remains of a 6.2 billion years old cosmic vestige called Maldg, a reminder of the ancient war between the tyrannical grey aliens of the Orion Empire. According to the information passed on to Collier by the Andromedan, we are here because we were brought here by an ancient extraterrestrial civilization surpassing our sun in age. To sustain this daring theory, we need to address speculation. Rumors have it that on the surface of the moon, lunar missions detected the presence of some unknown chemical compounds, and that discovery was entirely covered up. Collier had his restraints on this matter, but Mirani's telepathic communication confirmed all doubts. The moon is hollow. It contains huge underground facilities built by E.T. and later humans from Earth. There are seven openings into the moon crust, and the underground bases. Conservative scientists have wondered why so many craters seem so shallow, despite their size. The Andromedans say, it's because much of the surface was built on top of a metallic shell of a circular space crest or a war carrier, as the Andromedans describe it. The craters on the moon are a solid hint to a trained eye, 
for their depth does not match a straying cosmic body, but a uniform shape pressing against the layers of lunar dust and rock. But since we are alone in this galaxy, who is responsible for the so-called craters? The answer comes from the Andromedan, who tells of cities and spacecraft hangars located on the far side of the moon, that were destroyed in a war over 113,000 years ago, leaving behind the marks visible from our planet. The Greys guided the first exploration mission of these ruins back in 1950, when a team of NSA, not NASA, astronauts allegedly delved into a lunar underground facility the size of New York, right underneath the Jules Verne crater. Inside the facility they found the remnants of a violent battle, seeing pieces of reptilian bodies scattered all over the place. When the Apollo astronauts landed on the moon, the world order had been there for some time, Collier wrote. This knowledge and technology was withheld from the lower levels of NASA and our military. NASA has been used as a blind to keep people from truly knowing what was going on there. The astronauts were silenced under threats and remain so today. Since then, the world government maintained a lunar population program starting with 36,000 hand-picked people. The colony is estimated to reach 600,000 occupants in the near future. David Icke claims the moon is hollow, and built by aliens. David Icke has also claimed the moon is hollow, and was a spaceship abandoned by aliens. Mr. Icke reached the conclusion after taking the leap from a general scientific consensus to say the moon shouldn't really be there. Many scientists agree the size of the moon is one of our solar system's biggest anomalies. Physics has been unable to explain why a planet the size of Earth has a moon of such a large size in comparison. Our moon would be expected to be about 40 miles in diameter, but is closer to 2,000 miles. David Icke explains his theory. They have no bloody clue where their moon came from and it shouldn't by physics be the the Earth not only has a satellite, but it is a giant satellite. Some scientists don't talk about a planet-moon relationship, but a planet-planet relationship, the moon is bigger than Pluto. And then we get the hollow moon, this is what I'm saying and others have said it's a hollowed out planetoid. He said the moon was hit by a lunar module to the equivalent of one ton of TNT in November 1969 and the shock waves built up with NASA scientists saying the moon rang like a bell. He described a launch vehicle later striking the moon with the equivalent force to 11 tons of TNT and NASA said the moon rang like a gong and continued to vibrate for 3 hours and 20 minutes to a depth of up to 25 miles. These two Russian scientists from the Society Academy of Science wrote an article in 1970 in Sputnik magazine in Russia headed is the moon the creation of an alien intelligence? And all these years later it indicates to the fact that they were right. The moon rang like a bell. Between 1972 and 1977, seismometers installed on the moon by the Apollo missions recorded moonquakes. The moon was described as ringing like a bell during some of those quakes, specifically the shallow ones. This phrase was brought to popular attention in March 1970, in an article in Popular Science. When Apollo 12 deliberately crashed the ascent stage of its lunar module onto the moon surface, it was claimed that the moon rang like a bell for an hour, leading to arguments that it must be hollow like a bell. Lunar seismology experiments since then have shown that the lunar body has shallow moonquakes that act differently from quakes on Earth, due to differences in texture, type, and density of the planetary strata, but there is no evidence of any large empty space inside the body. The moon not only rang like a bell, but the whole moon wobbled in such a precise way that it was almost as though it had gigantic hydraulic damper struts inside it. Moon rocks have been found to contain processed metals, including brass, and mica, and the elements uranium-236 and neptunium-237 that have never been found to occur naturally. Ken Johnson, supervisor of the data, and photo control department during the Apollo missions. Dr. Carl Sagan wrote in 1966, a natural satellite cannot be a hollow object. 
So, if the moon is a hollow artificial construct as the facts lead us to understand, who built the moon, how did they get it into its present orbit, and why did they put it there? How is it that our moon remains stationary in Earth's orbit, never revealing the dark side to us? Such questions will certainly not be answered overnight but the initial realization that our moon is not a natural object behaving naturally would raise a few eyebrows were it common public knowledge.